I am Gavin Dowdy. Uh, I am an engineer on the AdWords mobile team. We're using Flutter. And you're lying about your state, but I hope only to yourselves. Um, so since we're at a cutting edge tech conference, uh, I'm going to go all the way back to 1981 and the introduction of the Xerox Star personal workstation. Now, this computer is famed in computer history for introducing things like the graphical user interface and the mouse and a, ch a bunch of other stuff that Steve Jobs might have seen uh, once upon a time. But it also included this, which is the Smalltalk programming language. Now, this was actually one of the major innovations of uh, this computer. Uh, Smalltalk was a deeply object-oriented language, and it heavily influenced all the languages that came after, including Objective-C and Java and, of course, Dart. Um, but one thing that it did that's different from those languages is it exposed a, uh, a, an integrated graphical user environment uh, that encouraged you to think about the system not as a bunch of source code files, but as a, but as a bunch of live objects that you could inspect and uh, change and uh, add more classes to. And not just the objects that might, might be in your application, but objects in the runtime environment as well. Uh, for example, my, uh, uh, the CEO at the startup where I was using Smalltalk um, was not an engineer. And when they saw the red debugger window pop up, uh, she was like, oh, these engineers are not doing their jobs. They shouldn't have bugs. So we, we, we were able to change the background color to blue. Um, <laughs> So uh, another thing that Smalltalk did was it promoted the idea of a model view controller architecture. Uh, you know, and we're not going to go into this, but I'm, I'm sure you guys have read a lot about it. Uh, and this was very innovative at the time. You could have things like your model encapsulating logic uh, as well as data that operate, as well as the data that that logic operated on. And it gave you a nice separation of concerns. Uh, but this was a while ago. And the Xerox Star and many of the other computers that came along afterwards were kind of designed around the assumption that you had a single user sitting at a single machine using a single um, object model that was sitting in memory and was very sporadically updated. It was tended to be like slurp it off disk, show it in memory, and splat it back down at the end when you saved your files. Um, and this model is really old and not really relevant anymore. Uh, so the way that data works in your applications today is more like this, where you've got multiple users, you've got multiple sensors, you've got data being updated in real time, right? Um, or you have something like this, where you have, you might even have the same user using two devices, like, oh, I'm going to do some stuff on my, on my phone, and no, I'm going to jump over to my desktop and make some edits, and, you know, and five, five other people doing the same thing at the same time. Um, and the idea that I want you to take away with you is that of live data. And really, I think all data is live data. Right? All data is going to change over time. And it may not change on the schedule that you are thinking about right now. Um, but we have tools for this now. We also have this idea of functional reactive programming, where you can think of things less as, I'm going to like ha call functions on an object and change that object. You can think of it more as information flowing through your system, and you're kind of like you're having the components of your system grab the data and look at it and produce different data that goes out the other end. Um, you know, you can think of this as data streaming around in your application. So Dart and Flutter make it really easy to do this. You've got a great streams API, uh, the Dart streams API. It's, got, it's full of rich operators. Um, if you want a, a formalism for creating snapshots of data as it changes, you can use Redux. Brian Egan's got to talk about that tomorrow. There's a, the next lightning talk also is partly about Redux. Uh, and if you want a, an even richer set of operators, you can use observables with the Rx Dart library. Uh, the author of that is here at the conference. Um, and if you, once you have a stream of data, you can use the Flutter Stream Builder widget to render that data uh, pretty straight, in a pretty straightforward way. I'm not going to go over all the details, but the main thing is you can pass it a stream, and the Stream Builder widget will take snapshots of the data coming out of that stream periodically, not you know, whenever the data changes, and pass it to your supplied build function so you can build a widget from it. So you, can't, you don't have to like keep state inside of your stateful widget, you can just assume that you're being handed the next state that your widget needs to render. So don't lie to yourself. The truth will set you free. Oh, wait. It's not. I've got one slide. OK. Here's the real truth. Smalltalk, even though it in the user model was you are operating on objects, 
What they were doing as you made these changes is they were writing these changes down to a log file. So you could take the base image and this log file and reconstitute your state. So even if you go all the way back to 1981, there was still this concept of a stream of data, and the stream was authoritative. And that's it. Thank you.